Hey, welcome back everybody. So the postman has brought us finally switches and cylinders. But today we are not interested in the switches. We want to show how to modify a cylinder. So let's get on. Usually I buy cylinders used because they are much cheaper. So this one, as you can see, has a nice smooth uh, piston surface. Uh, sometimes uh, when I buy cylinders they come uh, oxidized like this. Or let's see if we have something worse like this. Yes. This is actually what people sell on uh, Bricklink. And I always keep some uh, good ones in stock uh, to replace them. Also, I have uh, all the bits if in case of an emergency a cylinder would leak. So I, ca I can replace the top seals, the piston seals or whatever needs replacing. Okay, so let's get this one open. I use those two tools. First, we need to pry open the top. Oh, come on. Yes, of course. It's always diff more difficult to do on the camera than it is when I'm not filming. Ah, crap. Okay. You get the idea. I I'll do this off camera because I need to basically use my body as the lever. There we go. Okay. So, when we open it, we are left with uh, two parts. First is the piston and the cylinder. Uh, the cylinder will get cleaned, the cylinder will get cleaned and uh, the holes will get drilled out. And the piston, the piston, okay focus, focus, come on, oh Jesus, okay I need to block the cylinder, the piston. Um, Okay, you see, you can see all the gunk here. We need to clean this off. The best tool to do this is toilet paper. So I use a bit of toilet paper and I clean it off. Hmm. Okay, uh, now I check this one, probably still needs a, needs a bit of cleaning, okay, and the top seal, yeah, the top seal is good. Okay, so for to lube the, the piston I use silicone spray bring in, in the spray can. Basically what I do I just lube it up so it's nice and lubricated. There we go. Very nice. Okay. 
Now we need to drill uh, a ho holes in the piston. But first, what we need to do is we need to clean the inside of the piston. The gunk that we saw on the piston rod itself is also present in the cylinder itself, in the housing. So I make something like this and we go inside. Yeah, there was a little bit something. Yeah. Okay, here you can see how small the hole in the uh, piston housing actually is. It restricts the flow of air and that's what makes the piston or the cylinder act uh, as a shock absorber. And we don't want that in an engine. We want this uh, to let air, uh, a lot of air through, uh, so we need to enlarge it. And just like we did with the switches, we are going to drill this. So I need to take out my drill and the 1.2 millimeter drill bit. Go and we drill it. There we go. That's a lot better. And the bottom one is done as well. Okay. Now I need to clean it up with some air. Okay, what I do is I usually spray a little bit of loop inside the cylinder and I close it up. There we go. But we're not done yet because uh, usually uh, those are fine, but sometimes uh, air can leak either through the top seal or through the seal on the piston. And we need to check that it doesn't leak. Uh, what I do is <clears throat> I take my modified uh, pump, which has uh, the inlet is drilled or the outlet, uh, a, a piece of tubing is glued in. So I can do this. You can see the the back pressure on the pump. You can hear it. This is good. Now let's see what the downstroke says. And this is also good. Yeah. So this pneumatic piston goes now a lot smoother for comparison. If we take a unmodified one, the faster I try to uh, move it up and down, the more resistance I get. And with this, there's no resistance at all. So this goes into the engine and I need to crack on with modifying the rest. Uh, and as you, can, as you have noticed, uh, we have a new camera perspective because I built a nice Lego uh, stand for the camera. Uh, as you can see, Mr. Cat uh, supervised the whole thing and approves. Uh, see you tomorrow with a new video. Bye.